Welcome to Ms. Holland's lecture on fossil and reproductive isolation. Part one, we will talk about how fossils are exactly formed. First type of fossilization is known as permineralization, is when minerals are carried by the water or deposited inside the bones themselves, causing them to turn into rock. The second type of fossilization is known as a natural cast, is when water removes all the original tissue of the organism, leaving what's known as an impression, as seen here with ancient coral. Trace fossils actually record an activity of an organism, such as a nest, maybe leftover footprints in the mud. And of course, you have the classic Jurassic Park, amber preserved fossils, in which organisms get trapped in tree resin and then hardened into a clear rock. Preserved remains can also happen usually in frozen ice. They can also be caught in volcanic ash, like the people in Pompeii, or even in bogs. However, the best environment for fossilization includes wetlands, bogs, and rivers. However, ask yourself for a second why only a tiny percentage of living things actually become fossils. Reason for that is scavengers, waves, and currents. When an organism dies, it doesn't necessarily float to the bottom of the ocean or sit nicely in the dirt. A lot of scavengers will rip it apart. Movement of the water, the tides, the waves, all that will tear them apart. So it's really hard to find a fossil completely intact. When you go to age fossils, remember there's two types, relative and radioactive. Relative estimates the time during which an organism lived. If it's high up on the placement of rocks, it's new. If it's low, it's old. Index fossils we use a lot of times to help us look, help us estimate the age of the rocks by what they contain. So here you can see fuselage and trilobites. They only existed at a specific time and never again. So if you find these in the rocks, you know exactly how old that rock is. Radiocarbon dating is when we use carbon-14. Carbon-14, which is an isotope, has a half-life of 5,730 years. Now we consume carbon by eating and breathing. When we die, carbon then begins, begins to decay. As you can see, the half-life of carbon, once it breaks in half and half and half again, we can estimate bones up to thousands and thousands of years. Other radioactive isotopes inc include krypton, beryllium, and uranium. From all of this information, we can then collaborate and figure out how old the Earth is. And we've estimated, based off of radioactive isotopes, the world to be 4.6 billion years old.